So I thought first off, it's uh, it's important you know to talk about what we're using it on. So I've picked two projects. Uh, they're most recent that we've done, um, and I think we've got a little video as well. They're only like a minute long each, so you're not going to fall asleep. Um, so project one is a it's an internal comms app for a bank. Um, it effectively is an intranet, it's a modern tech on it. You can use your mobile phone rather than logging on to some old website. A um, little problem, uh, banks are quite funny about using their name in public and there's a lot of security and all everything. So there's only one bank to me now, so I'll be referring to them as bank for the rest of the talk. Uh, that's what we're allowed to call them. Uh, there's a little bit under that and if you, you know, want us to Google and maybe find out who they are, do not ask me who they are. Um, so I've got this little video we're gonna play. So it's quite sped up. So on the right-hand side, we've got Gutenberg here. We're making a post really quickly. And on the left-hand side here, we've got the app that we've built, which is pulling in the most recent posts. So we're just powering through all, adding all these different custom blocks. And we're going to publish it. Here we go. And then when we publish it, we slow it down a little bit so you can see this. So for this, it was all about taking a Gutenberg block and converting it so that it rendered the same in an app. And that was quite a cool experience. Um, so you'll see like, you know, the call block that we just made, the quotes, if you had a gallery, this is what the gallery looks like. And it's translating that so the user knows that even on an app, the blocks render the same as they would on a website and same with the related content. So um, that gives you a good concept of the app. So, you know, it has liking, commenting, and that was a really interesting project. And the second project that we got is for um, Amnesty International, it's obviously an awesome charity. Um, and what we did for them was They've got a lot of different brands out there. You know, they, they have like, they'll be in Russia, Mali, they'll be all over the world. And each of them have their own sectors that look after those sites. And what happens is, you know, everyone gets their own good ideas of what's good looking. So you get like strange colors, weird logos, massive logos, you name it, it's there. Um, and even some of the sites don't work anymore. Uh, so they came to us and said like, we need a way to unify all this. So we said, well, why don't we build you a core theme? Why don't we make a Gutenberg? Why don't you build your sites from now on, but at least you're building it within a framework so all the sites look the same. And so that had 18 custom blocks, so it was quite a lot, uh, and, but it gives a good experience of what you really can do with Gutenberg, and this is really cutting edge. So this is another video to watch. This is what the uh, built page would look like. So that's all been built by the editor. They don't need anyone at dev to do that, so I'll just show you building it. So we'll just put in, these are some standard blocks that are in Gutenberg. And then this would be a custom one where we build the hero that you would see at the top. And so they can just fill in all those details. They can customize that as much as they want. So everything's really customizable so that you can build a lot of different variations. And then these are section blocks which just allow you to have different background colors. And this is um, a link block which allows you to put icons or facts in to say, you know, uh, how many people they're supporting or who they are. Um, and then the list block is for pulling in content. So you can pull you know, from your blog or a different category. You can change the format and the style, or you can custom pick certain ones. So you can recommend different ones. So in this case, this is the grid style. And they can custom any blocks they want and where they want to put that. And then obviously we have the call to action at the bottom. Now, the first site that we're going to be launching on this will be the Amnesty EU site. Um, and they've built that all themselves. We've built the blocks and just left them to it. And they give us a bit of feedback if something's not working quite right. And again, the finished article of that. Um, we are planning to open the sources eventually, and we'll be debranding it, which means that people can do this as well. So it'll be a good example. And if you want to build your own uh, Gutenberg themes, you might learn a lot from using this. Um, so that'll be happening in due course. So what I done was I just I actually said, oh, well, I'll just tweet people and see what questions they might have about Gutenberg, because I didn't really know how to tell people about what we're up to, apart from show a project. And I thought it'd be interesting to get some feedback from people and say what they want to know. So I also haven't written any slides for the answers, so that I was more honest when I told you, apart from this one, because I couldn't remember the timeline. Um, so in November last year, um, we met with a bank, and we pitched a project. And we didn't have Gutenberg in there at all. Actually, Simon was with us in the pitch. And he said, oh, can you install Gutenberg? So it was, it was just in there on the side. No one really talked about it. We just kind of showed them how cool WordPress is without Gutenberg. And it is. And we demoed the app. They loved it. And then. We went to WordCamp US, and there was just so much vibe about what is Gutenberg going to do. It's going to be the next big thing. And they've done this really awesome demo, and it looks super stable. And we came away with just such a good film. So then we pretty much convinced them to do Gutenberg. So in January, we were like, let's go Gutenberg. And that kicked off. Um, and then you know, by June, we, we'd been using it for a while. I wouldn't say our experiences were completely positive at this point, you know, because it was still early days. You know, they're still building on it. It's in beta. 
Uh, and then in June, we arrived at um, World Camp EU, and you know, Matt was on stage, and he was like, it's coming, get ready for it, it's coming. And at that point, that's when we were talking with Amnesty, and it was ready for that. We were like, we're going to do something amazing with this, because we know it's stable now, and we really can push the boundaries, and so that's what we did. Um, and that demo for Amnesty, uh, we only recorded that recently. Uh, if you want to see a more full-featured version of that demo, uh, Tess from VIP has actually put some, she's talked over it, and uh, it's just slowed down a little bit, and you can see it. That's on uh, our Twitter account and also the VIP Twitter account, so you can check that out. Uh, if you can't find that, just grab me later on, I'll show you. It is worth watching, it is interesting. Um, so these ones I don't have any answers to yet. Uh, so what is learning curve? Uh, that, that is a really hard one to answer in times, because... Um, most developers out there now will know PHP, and they're maybe not, they know a bit of JavaScript, not maybe the best, and I know Matt said a while back, maybe two years ago, learn JavaScript, and it's nice saying that, but that's not easy for everyone to do, and it's hard for a big team to transition. Um, we took probably an odd approach to this, you know, we pretty much picked one person on our team, uh, someone who's a bit younger, and we know learns fast, and said, go learn Gutenberg, have as much time as you need, left them to go learn it, and uh, all we got was, the docs are terrible, how you meant to use this, the docs are terrible. <laughs> After a bit of moaning, he finally picked it up, and you know, what we used was this one person learned everything, and they know how to speak to the rest of our team, and we got them writing blog posts and content for the rest of our team. So we, we give someone the time to learn it, and then they train the rest of the team. I think that's a really simple way of doing it. Just pick one person, give them the freedom to do it. And, uh, you know, our team know it better than me. It's as simple as that. You know, give them the time to learn it. So the next one is, how does Gutenberg develop, development be different? Um, well, I, I think it changes in the sense that you know, traditionally we would approach a client and say, how many templates is there in this website? And it was kind of roughly that, you know, you have a blog and you have this uh, product page or, you know, and you'd, you'd work out what templates were there and you'd, you'd cost on those templates and you'd build it. And also it was quite easy to see progress. So uh, I'd be like, I built that template template and the client would look at it and review it and be like, well done, right? But nowadays you, you can't really build the site until you have all the blocks. So what happens is, is like progress feels a lot slower, takes time. It doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere sometimes. You're like, how far are we along the project? Oh, we've got like 15 blocks built. How many pages have we got done? None, because we need the rest of those blocks. And you're like, can we not prioritize some of the important ones? Yeah, but they don't know necessarily which blocks want to go where. And, and it becomes this kind of confusing concept a little bit. And because you're giving them that free form, they can do whatever they want. So they need the whole thing before they launch the first site. So I think it's important up front to explain that to the client as well, that it is a little bit different. But at the end of the day, over the next few years, they can keep building out custom pages and they'll have that free form. So they're not restricted to these templates anymore. Uh, what do I want to know now? I wish I'd known before. Um, there's a mixed one this. I think IE11 is really bad on Gutenberg. Um, that's my biggest criticism. And to be quite honest with you, I didn't really give it a full test over. And uh, it's led us into some problems with working with a bank and their own older browsers. And, and I think with the Gutenberg team, it doesn't seem to be a priority which is fine, it's understandable when you're talking about maybe 2% of the web, it's definitely going to be a priority for something that's so new. But if you don't do your research first before doing Gutenberg, you could, you could stumble into a situation where the client's like, why doesn't it work? You know, I expect that this just to work. It's meant to be the new technology, and you're like, well, you're using the old browser, that's why it doesn't work. Um, so that's, that's probably one of the big problems we've had, um, and we've sort of migrated from that now, but it's worth noting that with the support for Gutenberg, you need to check it out before you do it. Um, that, you know, there's other issues. It does move fast. Um, I think you're pretty much getting a weekly release at this point, um, which is difficult, real difficult. Talk about some stuff that we built in January. It doesn't work today. So we're constantly editing it. And the thing I would say is that, you know, we're sort of a medium-sized team, I would say. So we have, we're not too big that we can't move quick, but we're not too small that we can't absorb costs. So we're in a real sweet spot for this type of stuff. So um, it's okay if it costs us a little bit more. Our clients have a good size and they're understanding, so we build those relationships to kind of balance the updates along with it. I would say if you're a smaller team, that's going to be difficult to do. And it's sort of unfair that you have to take that hit. And so I think there, you know, there is developments out there that need to change uh, for Gutenberg. So for example, I don't know if anyone's seen the ACF um, block editor, which is pretty much, rather than being so interactive, you just provide the fields that you want, and then it's sort of, you can use that data to build a block. And it simplifies it, and I think that's the way it's going to go. So, you know, yeah, it is difficult, and that's something I think we didn't really understand in the beginning. Um, and then how do we discuss it with clients? Uh, it's actually really easy. Uh, we normally approach them, they've heard of WordPress. A lot of our clients come in, you know, I want a WordPress site. Uh, we'll say, that's brilliant. Have you heard of Gutenberg? No. 
uh, what is it? And we'll say, well, it's the new editor, and we demo it, and they're like, that's really nice. Um, and then I guess for us, it's more the sales pitch would be, you know, we can sell you a website now, or an app, or whatever that we're building the platform, but you know, in six months' time, maybe a year's time, it's going to be outdated. And then you're going to go for this headache of how do we upgrade? And so although there is risk to say to someone, do you want to use a beta product right now? And a lot of people will be like, I don't. I'm not going to use a beta product. You need to say, well, it's worth a little bit of risk now in order to save a lot of costs in the future. And it, you know, most people can relate to that. You know, they, do, they always say, to, a lot of our clients say this, how long will this site last? Well, it'll last as much effort you put into it. And so we'll do it the proper way the first time. Uh, and then how do clients react? Well, it is generally really positive. Um, from an editing experience, we had a bit of feedback today from the bank, and their editors called it fun. And <laughs> I guess the, the product owner said, it's not meant to be fun when they're editing, uh, <laughs> which is like good feedback, but also a strange comment. And uh, I don't know, like there's there a lot of positive experiences with it, and it, it's easy. It's easy to use. It really is. Um, and there might be a learning curve if someone hasn't used it before, but... I think it's, it's a pretty easy sell because it's easier to use than, say, Word or anything else that people are working with. And you've got to think that these days that more and more people are using platforms like Squarespace and Weebly and all, and they already have this type of technology. And that's why Gutenberg is coming around to sort of bring us on par with that. So it's easy just to show it to someone and demo it. And we've done a lot of stuff now where if like, the client comes to us and says, um, I want to do this, we will spend a week building the demo with Gutenberg to show it to them because they don't understand it unless you show it. So we take that time to invest in it. And we are always learning from that as well. So, and then how do we price projects for Gutenberg? Um, you know, I actually had a good conversation with Gabe uh, earlier about this because they're definitely more expensive. It's a fact. We're not going to get away from that right away. Um, I have a rule of thumb in the office, which is pretty much uh, it takes a week to build a block, which is not necessarily true in all cases, but I follow that rule and it sort of pans out. So that's one developer for a week to build a block. Um, what you will find is a client might come to you and say, oh, I have like 30 blocks, but the truth is a lot of those will be similar. They'll just be very customizable. So there's a lot of times you need to sit down and say, can we combine it into one super block that does a lot of these options? And you'll find that you can drill it down a lot sooner than that. Um, there might be other things where you might be able to uh, just nest standard blocks that are there or new standard blocks to get around that. So you know, it's all about trying to pull that scope down a little bit so you can still price this project at a reasonable price. I would also say that you know you, you will save money in the long run. I would normally say to clients that you know if we give you the customization now, you're not going to be calling us all the time for something new. So there is a lot. There's you know if they're out for the long run, then it's definitely worth the investment now. Uh, now it's your turn. So we've done a couple of questions. You get the you get the sort of format. Um, do you want to try a couple of questions? I have put uh, just the company Twitter on here because um, they're probably a little bit quicker at responding to questions if you do ask. But if you do tweet me, which you didn't see the slide because I was missing. Um, <laughs> I would reply, but I'm also out tonight, so you can always like come up to me and chat to me. <laughs> right, some questions? Question.